there are a lot many more, but without further delay, please join me to welcome Mr. Petroda. Thank you, Poonam. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is indeed a special privilege to be here with you. I want to thank Poonam for giving me this unique opportunity. It's good to be home. I'm from Chicago. I bank at Northern Trust for the last 40 years. <laughs> I went to school here at Illinois Institute of Technology almost 50 years ago. And it is good to be with all of you. I want to share with you today a little bit about what we are trying to do in India with IT, broadband, and young talent. I think a lot of the lessons that we are going through are probably important, not only to India, but to the rest of the world. I will share with you a little bit of my journey to put things in perspective, and then talk about how we can put some of those things into practice. Again, it is one man's view. I'm biased. And I'd like to be very clear that my background is basically IT, telecom. And as a result, I see world with narrow pair of glasses. I was born and raised in a small little village in a tribal town of 3,000 people, <coughs> 70 years ago. My parents had fourth grade education. I was the first one to go to college in India. And one fine day, I saw in the newspaper that President Kennedy has decided to send man onto the moon. <coughs> I was young, energetic, and stupid. <laughs> So I said, hey, this is a good idea. Let's go to America. <coughs> I applied for admission at several places and got it at Illinois Institute of Technology. Didn't know what Chicago meant. Had no idea what this place was like. Landed up in December, <laughs> cold winter. <laughs> <laughs> Went to YMCA on 7th Street. Stayed there on 5th floor, and the next morning there was murder on 7th floor. And that was my introduction to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Went to school at Illinois Institute. Came here to get a PhD in physics. My professor told me that it takes seven years to get a PhD. I had a girlfriend in India. I quickly decided to change my subject <laughs> and got electrical engineering degree in nine months. So I didn't marry. My girlfriend came from India to Chicago. We got married here at YWCA and settled in Chicago. I've been here for close to 50 years. Built a business out of Downers Grove, Illinois, in telecom in early 70s, sold it to Rockwell International, became head of Rockwell for telecom, and went to India for the first time to Delhi and tried to make a telephone call. This was 1979, early 80s, and could not make a phone call. Then India had less than 2 million telephones, and it used to take 15 years to get a telephone connection. A little bit of arrogance and a lot of ignorance said, I'm going to fix this damn thing. 
So I came back and told my wife that I found something to do. <coughs> because I sold my company to Rockwell, made a little bit of money, which looked like a lot of money in 79. In hindsight, there was no money at all. But then for someone who had no cash, getting a few billion bucks and put it at Northern Trust was great fun, done. You don't need to work anymore. So I decided to go back to India to work on Talata. Spent 10 years working with the Prime Minister, became head of Talakam, minister in his government, and focused on using IT for nation building. Built from scratch all of the talent, technology, institutions, infrastructure, companies, all of the big companies that you hear about today. TCS, Wipro, Infosys had five people, eight people when we started. The great executives of Infosys used to hang around my office looking for something to do. Today, India has one billion mobile phones in the short span of 20 years. India produces hundred billion dollar worth of software export and services every year, year after year. And that number is going to go to 250 billion by 2020. But India still has huge challenges. India is still very poor. A lot of illiterates, 300 million below poverty line, 220 million hungry, 300 million illiterates. But this India is growing at the rate of 8 to 10 percent a year, leaving aside last year or so. And it will continue to grow at 8 to 10 percent for the next 20 years to come. So, my perspective. India has three fundamental challenges. <coughs> One, disparity. Disparity between rich and poor, urban, rural, educated, and uneducated. Two, demography. India has 550 million young below age of 25. We need to create 15 million new jobs every year, year after year. How do you do all that? <coughs> How do you educate these people? How do you give them skill sets, training? Because it is their prosperity, their future which is at stake. And three, development. Everything is happening in India but not happening fast enough. We need more roads, more schools, more colleges, more teachers, more doctors, more hospitals, and you name it. Everywhere you look around in India, you need expansion. You need excellence, leaving aside top 5% of the universities. Education quality is not that great. Leaving aside top 5% of the hospital, health services are not that great. And the list goes on and on. And the third is equity. We have to make sure that the poorest of the poor can indeed get the best education possible, best health services possible. So when we look at all of these things, we realize that the only key driver is technology. Without technology, we cannot deliver any of these things today. Technology is the key. And to me, technology is the greatest social leveler, second only to that. Technology is an entry point to bring about generational change.